How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is another Jersey Boy special with Ryan playing Corvold. He keeps a Westville Abbey, a mountain, a nurturing peatland, a sheltered thicket, Meseric Crawl Death Priest, from beyond, and a Dreadhorde Invasion. Mike is playing his Freaky Farika deck, keeping two forests, a swamp, Ghost Quarter, Obnixilis Unshackled, Lane on the Void, and a Mimic Fat. Trevor is playing Krufix, keeping a forest, Cavalier of Gales, Castle Garenbrig, Mana Drain, Cultivate, Mana Crypt, and Jingataxis Core Augur. Harry is playing Hanna, keeping a Mind Stone, an Azorius Chancery, Tragic Arrogance, Time Wipe, Hollowed Fountain, Tranquil Cove, and Teferi Time Raveler. Ryan wins the die roll, and before he can even start, Mike has a pre-game effect, putting out his Leyline of the Void. Ryan starts us off by playing a Tap Sheltered Thicket. Trevor plays a Forest and casts Mana Crypt. He's able to cast Cultivate to find a basic for the field, and one for his hand. Mike plays a Lanoir Wastes and passes. Harry plays a Tap Tranquil Cove, gaining one life, and passes it back to Ryan. For Ryan's second turn, he plays a Nurturing Peatland and taps out taking one for a Dreadhorde Invasion. Trevor untaps and rolls for the Mana Crypt. He makes the call correctly and doesn't lose life. After drawing, he plays one of the islands he found with the Cultivate and casts Drawn from Dreams, passing as he looks at his top 7 and keeps 2. Mike plays a forest and passes. Harry shocks out a Hallowed Fountain, taking 2, and then casts a Mind Stone. Ryan puts a zombie army into play at the beginning of his upkeep and taps a sheltered thicket to cast Gilded Goose in his main phase. With nothing else, he passes turn. Trevor rolls for Mana Crypt, but loses 3 this time around. He plays a tap Lumbering Falls, but is still able to tap out for Crufix and passes to Mike. Mike plays a Swamp and passes. Harry untaps and casts a Fairy Time Raveler. He down takes the Planeswalker to bounce Crufix to Trevor's hand, and then follows up with an Azorius Chancery, bouncing his Hall of Fountain back to hand and passing to Ryan. Ryan amasses on his upkeep, putting a 1-1 counter onto his army, and then plays a Mountain in his main phase. He taps out for From Beyond, and moves to combat, swinging his zombie army at Trevor. Trevor takes the 2, and Ryan passes. Trevor untaps, and casts Cavalier of Gales. He brainstorms, and then puts out a Castle Vantress return, and discards down to hand size. Mike plays a Ghost Quarter, and then taps out for a Desecration Demon. Harry up ticks to Fairy in his main phase, and then casts a Phyrexian Metamorph, copying the Cavalier of Gales as it comes in. He draws three and puts two back, and then plays a tapped Hollowed Fountain. Ryan amasses again, and the zombie army is now a 3-3, plus he makes an Eldrazi Scion token. He then taps out, using the Goose to sacrifice a food, and casts his commander, Corvold. He sacrifices the Eldrazi Scion to the Dragon's Enter the Battlefield effect, putting a 1-1 counter on him, and draws a card. Moving to combat, Ryan sacrifices the army to Desecration Demon's ability, which lets him put another plus 1 plus 1 counter onto his dragon, and draws him another card. The demon also gets tapped and gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and with nothing else, Ryan passes. Trevor rolls for his Mana Crypt, and avoids the damage. He recasts his commander, and follows up with Swifted Boots. The boots go into the Cavalier, and he then swings the Cavalier at Mike for 5, and passes. Mike untaps, and plays a Forest. He casts a Mimic Vat, and moves to combat, and with no one using the demon's ability, swings it at Trevor for 7. 
Harry plays a Halimar Depths, rearranging his top three cards. He then upticks to Fairy and casts Azorius Locket. He holds up the rest of his mana and passes to Ryan. Ryan gets his upkeep triggers, making a fresh zombie army and a new Scion. He plays a Forest and then casts Caustic Caterpillar, followed by a Gruul Signet. He taps two more mana for Goblin Bombardment and moves to combat. He swings Corvold at Harry for 7 after sacrificing a zombie army and getting to draw a card to Corvold's on attack trigger. Harry then takes the 7 commander damage, and Ryan passes. Trevor rolls for his mana crypt on his upkeep and loses the roll, taking 3. He then plays another castle, Castle Garenbrig, and tabs out for Kozilek the Great Distortion. He draws up to 7, and then equips Kozilek with the boots and moves to combat. He swings Kozilek at Teferi, and the Cavalier goes at Mike once more. Before Teferi bites the dust though, Harry casts Thirst for Meaning, drawing three and discarding two cards that get exiled, and Mike then takes another five. Mike's turn has him casting Pernicious Deed, but unfortunately misses a land drop, and he has to pass. Harry windmill slams a Detention Sphere, and then contemplates what to exile. He decides on the Swiftfoot Boots, and plays it on Attacar Wastes. We then see a Cloud Blazer, which has him gaining two and drawing what enters. He then swings the Cavalier Metamorph at Trevor for 5, and passes turn. At the end of Harry's turn, Ryan sacrifices a Scion to add a generic mana to fuel the Signet. He puts a plus one plus one counter onto Corvold and draws a card, and uses the mana from the Signet to sacrifice the Caterpillar, getting another counter onto Corvold and drawing a card. He has the Caterpillar take out the Mimic Fat, and Ryan moves to his turn. Ryan untaps, loses another one from the Dreadhorde Invasion, and makes an army, and then a Scion. He plays a Colony Garden, making a plant token, and then casts Maelstrom Pulse, destroying the Leyline of the Void. Ryan moves to combat, and this time, swings at Trevor for 10, and sacrifices the newly made plant token. In his second main phase, he casts Talisman of Resilience, and then loses one to the Talisman, as he uses it to help cast a Reassembling Skeleton. Trevor untaps, and loses another roll, he moves to combat, swinging both his creatures at Mike. Mike blocks with the demon, but still takes 12 from Kozilek. Trevor then shuffles the Cavalier back into his library with the death trigger, and gets to scry 2. In his second main phase, Trevor taps most of his mana for all his dust. With the spell in the stack, Ryan sacrifices all of his creatures to the bombardment, drawing 4 cards, and dealing the damage to Harry. All the colored permanents are then sacrificed, and Trevor then plays a Mystic Sanctuary, putting all his dust back on top of his library. Mike untaps and plays a land. He casts Obnixilus Unshackled and passes. Harry plays a Celestial Colonnade and with nothing to do, passes back to Ryan. Ryan untaps and makes another Eldrazi Scion. He then casts Golgari's Signet and then Sir Conrad the Grim. Not wanting to die, Trevor activates Kozlek's ability and is forced to discard a Seedborn Muse to counter Sir Conrad. Ryan then tries to resolve Zulupur Cutthroat, which Trevor counters by discarding a mana drain to Kozilek. Ryan then passes, to which Harry tries to cast his Sphinx's Revelation. Countering his third spell for this turn, Trevor uses Swan Song and gives Harry a bird. Trevor untaps and rolls for the Mana Crypt. He really can't afford a loss, so he's very happy when he wins the roll, and goes straight to combat. He swings Kozilek at Ryan, and Ryan blocks with the Scion and sacrifices both of them for mana. With the Scions dying, Obnixilus gets two plus one plus one counters. In his second main phase, Trevor recasts all his dust, which we saw him put back on top of his library last turn, and passes wiping the board. Mike untaps and casts a Doom Whisperer, passing. Harry plays a Hall of Heliod's Generosity in his main phase and casts Time Wipe, and with no creatures to bounce, he wipes the board. He then casts Hannah and passes to Ryan. Ryan untaps and makes a Scion. He casts Golgari Germination, and then Izoni Thousand Eyed. With four creatures in the yard, this makes Ryan 4 1 1 insect tokens, and he passes to Trevor. Trevor rolls for the Mana Crypt again with bated breath, but dodges another bolt. He plays an Alchemist Refuge, and then makes 10 mana. He casts Jin Gataxis, and once the Praetor is on the field, equips it with the Swiftfoot Boots. He then moves to his end step and draws 7. Mike untaps, and with no hesitation, casts Crooks of Fate, choosing non-dragons to be destroyed. With the Crux on the stack, 
Ryan responds by sacrificing an insect with Izoni to gain one life and draw a card. Everything then gets destroyed, and Ryan makes a sapling token, and Mike then passes. Harry pays to sacrifice the locket and draws two. He then casts a Mystic Remora and passes turn. Ryan untaps and makes another Scion. He casts a Catacomb Sifter, followed by Masaryk, Krull Death Priest. In response, Trevor casts Dig Through Time, but doesn't pay for Harry's Remora, letting Harry draw a card. One of the cards he finds must be a foil, which he casts after discarding an island and another card to counter the Death Priest. Harry responds to the foil by casting Omen of the Seas, and scrying two, and then drawing a card. Foil then resolves, and Masaryk is countered. Ryan then moves to combat, and swings a sapling token to Trevor for one. Trevor rolls for the Mana Crypt, and takes the hit. He follows up with Crufix, and then a loyal Drake. Moving to combat, he draws a card, and then plays a Flooded Grove in his second main phase, and casts Defense of the Heart before passing turn. Mike taps out for a Conduit of Ruin, and gets the Tutor to his library for a creature with Mana Cross of 7 or greater, and puts it on top. Harry untaps, and pays for the Remora trigger. He plays a Sea of Clouds, and then casts an Idyllic Tutor. He finds Elspeth conquers death, and puts it to hand. We then see a Smothering Tithe, and he passes to Ryan. At the end of turn, Ryan does some sacrificing and scrying, and returns the Reassembling Skeleton to play, and sacrifices his Nurturing Peatland to draw a card. On Ryan's upkeep, he makes another Scion. He then casts a Mitotic Slime, and activates the Westvale Abbey, sacrificing five creatures to transform the land, and gets four scry triggers. With the slime dying, Ryan also gets to make two 2-2 two -two slime tokens, and three sapperling tokens with the non-token creatures dying. He then moves to combat and swings Ormondal, Profane Prince at Trevor. Unfortunately for Ryan, Ormondal does not have trample, and Trevor is able to block with his loyal Drake. The Drake gets taken out, and Ryan gains nine from lifelink. With nothing else, Ryan passes. Trevor stacks his upkeep triggers so Defense of the Heart goes off before Mana Crypt, and he searches and puts out a Void Winnower and a Consecrated Sphinx into play. He then rolls for the Crypt, and luckily dodges into 3 damage. Drawing for turn, Trevor opts to not pay for Smothering Tithe, and Harry gets a treasure. He then taps a boatload of mana for Kozilek Butcher of Truth, and draws 4 cards from the Oncath trigger. He then follows up with an Eternal Witness, returning Dig Through Time to hand. He then boots up Kozilek, and fearing a crackback, just passes turn. Mike plays a land for turn, and then casts Lord of the Void, with its cost reduced thanks to the Conduit, and Mike then passes. Harry has so much mana thanks to no one paying for Tithe, and on his upkeep, decides not to keep the Mystic Remora around, letting it go to the graveyard. Using some of that mana, Harry first casts Elspeth Conquers Death, and exiles the Void Winnower. He then casts a Feldar Guardian, and the table, fearing a combo, has Trevor using Pact of Negation. Harry tries to counter it with a Venser, but Trevor taps 2 blue for a counterspell, countering the counter that's trying to counter his counter. With the counter war over, Harry then casts Tragic Arrogance, and begins choosing permanence to wipe away the rest of the board. He chooses to keep Smothering Tithe, a treasure, and sacrifices the other treasures, floating the mana. He lets Ryan keep Ormondal, a talisman, and from beyond. Mike keeps Conduit of Ruin, and lastly, Trevor keeps Crufix, Eternal Witness, and a Mana Crypt. With Ryan's slimes dying, they each create two 1 1 slime tokens. Harry then casts a Thirst for Knowledge, and passes turn after he's done drawing and discarding. Ryan untaps and makes a Scion token. He moves straight to combat, and swings a team at Harry for 13. Harry takes the hit, with Ryan gaining 9. Ryan then casts God Eternal Bontu, and sacrifices all of his ooze tokens to draw 4 cards, and sacrifices a Scion, and takes the 1 from the Talisman, to help cast Bitter Blossom. He then passes to Trevor. Trevor stacks his triggers to have the Crypt on top of the Pact payment, and he casts Dig Through Time in response, and puts 2 cards from his top 7 into hand. He then casts a Torrential Gear Hulk, getting to recast the Dig Through Time, and all this is before resolving the Crypt Trigger. He then casts a Gross and Grip, and blows up the Bitter Blossom. 
He rolls for the crypt then, and loses, and sadly loses the game. Mike untaps and nearly taps out for See the Unwritten. He finds an indulgent tormentor and a sower of discord. He chooses his opponent so that any loss from one player will cause the other player to lose that much life. He then moves to combat and swings the conduit at Harry for 5. Harry takes the hit, which also has Ryan losing 5 as well. Harry untaps and draws. He casts Muldrifter, drawing 2 as it enters, and then plays a Skycloud Expanse. Next up is a Factor Fiction, and he chooses Mike to split his top 5 cards into 2 piles. Mike splits the piles with Mindslaver in one, and four in the other, and Harry takes the Mindslaver. He casts it, and activates it, taking control of Ryan's next turn. On Ryan's turn, which is now controlled by Harry, Harry starts by flame slashing the Indulgent Tormentor. He then puts a swift end to the Sower of Discord before moving to combat, and swings at Mike for 14, which has Ryan gaining 9. Harry then casts Ryan's Yeheni, and sacrifices the Scion and uses the mana to activate Cryptic Caves, drawing Ryan a card, and making Harry a treasure. He then sacrifices Ryan's board, and taps him out, passing a Mike. Mike casts a Harmonize, drawing three, and then moves to combat. He sings the Conduit of Ruin at Harry for five, and then passes turn. Harry draws and casts a Soul Ring. He then sacrifices the Mind Stone to draw a card, and then pays 5 for a Gilded Lotus. Next up for Harry is Hannah, and he plays a Prairie Stream, and then casts Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. Moving to combat, Harry swings his Muldrifter at Mike for 2 in the air, and once combat is done, passes turn. At the end of turn, Mike uses Nature's Claim to blow up the Smothering Tithe and gain Harry 4 life. Ryan takes his turn and with a significantly less menacing board, begins by casting Journey to Eternity on the Scion. At this point, Mike realizes he's either dead to Yeheni or a Muldrifter, and decides to preemptively scoop it up and get ready for the next game. Ryan then sacrifices the Sackplane to Yeheni, transforming the enchantment into Atzel, Cave of Eternities. He uses the cave's ability to put Sir Conrad back into play, and passes to Harry. At the end of Ryan's turn, Harry activates the Hall of Heliod's Generosity, putting the Starfield of Nyx back on top. Harry untaps, and with the table realizing that Harry pretty much has an almost Mindslaver lock, don't really want to play through it, and scoop it up to him. Game review time. So I always love it when someone dies to their own mana crypt, and this fact hasn't changed, so this game is a winner for me. Had Ryan known what he was in store for, I don't think he would have been so quick to blow up the Leon of the Void at that point, since it would have basically stopped Harry from Mindslaver locking him for the rest of the game. Unfortunately for Mike, it seems like he either stalls on lands, or his deck only draws ramp spells. On the plus side, one thing that he wasn't short on was Graveyard Hate, which is something that people criminally undervalue. Harry's Hannah deck I think was mainly built around her being used as a value engine to get back critical pieces and put them on top of his library. I haven't seen much of her as a commander since the Paradox engine got banned, but hopefully if you're on the fence about building her, this showed you that you don't necessarily need the engine to have a good deck. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But, it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.